And it's like, just do, just play, man. I mean, you know, I get it. The models cost money, but the worst thing you could ever do is have to strip the paint off and repaint it. You know, assuming you didn't like throw it across the room and break it and have to buy another model. You know, nothing we do is, is uh, life-saving, you know, so if you mess up, fix it. Yeah, if, yeah, Jen's over there saying, if you're throwing a tiny toy across the room because you're mad at it, you got bigger problems, and painting is probably not what you should be doing for that moment right then. But, um, you know, in reality, it's like, just loosen up and, and have fun with it. And, and it, that's a tough one to say because everybody enjoys their hobby. Everybody enjoys, um, you know, everything differently. And, but this is something that everybody, I think, can wrap their head around, is that you need to get to a point when painting that you can just <sighs> breathe out and grab something and try it. You know, not everything has to be follow this, this methodology that I've written. Not everything has to be go on YouTube and see what color somebody used. You know, I, I always get a little, I don't, I you gotta pick my words wisely here, right? It's not, it's not really disturbed, but I'm gonna say disturbed. I get a little disturbed when what I see, ma the majority of what I see on the internet is, hey, what colors did you use to do that, right? Because if I could just press a button, boop, and have everybody's head go, you know, and, and just look and say like, oh, wow, you know, like look at where they put the bright colors and the dark colors and then you just go grab your colors and divide them up between bright and dark and just start slapping color on stuff. Right. Um, very rarely will you make bad color decisions. That's a very broad statement. You may, but those are easy to correct. Right. But it's more that constricting thought process that's like I have to have the right colors to do this job or I'm not going to do it. Because then you wind up just not painting. Because you'll use the colors. Like if you ask me, hey, what'd you do to do him? And I tell you the colors I use on the face. You'll paint the face and it won't look the same and you get bummed out. Well, I got all the right colors, they told me. And I did all the things and it looks different, you know. Because what it's really about is textures and contrast and all of that. And then if you want to do those textures and contrast with the same colors, then the color list becomes important. But it's like third or fourth down the list of importance at any point in time. And I say that time and time again. So for me and, and the way that I like to talk to people, and a lot of people don't like this conversation, is that if you want to get better at your art, if your art includes visual, painting, drawing, whatever, is to loosen up. Loosen up and just sketch. Just go for it. You know, like imagine having a pencil and a piece of paper and wanting to draw a horse. Just start sketching a horse. Don't try to make every line the finished line of the horse. If every line you need to make is that perfect hair in the mane of the horse, you're going to hate your art. I mean, unless you're an accomplished artist and you draw that way. But as you're getting good and you're learning and you're doing, it's like don't worry about every line being correct, right? Worry about getting every line on the project, right? Worry about touching the brush to the model and putting paint on it. That's what you should be worried about. And if you get outside the lines, clean it up. It's easy, right? Uh, if you choose a, a color incorrectly or if you don't get your shadow the way you like it, fix it. Right? That's easy. Or move on to the next model. A lot of times the model's not even worth fixing. It's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And move on to the next one. And make your next model a little bit more of a focus to correct what you weren't happy with on the previous one. Right? But just be loose about it. You know, just uh, shake it out. Uh, right? Jen's taking yoga uh, instructor courses right now. Right? And I'm sure she goes through that. Just shake it out. Uh, right? Makes sense that you be in charge of the best paints with that attitude, no compromise, just quality. I mean, that, I mean, we don't like we don't want to just sell stuff. We want to make great stuff and then hope it sells. <laughs> you know, that, that's always the the scare of being in business. But you're asking contrast val contrast greater than value, greater than style, greater than color, or style greater than contrast, greater than color. Well, that's a hard. That's not an equation you can overlap on everyone. That's going to be choice. It's very subjective. Contrast and value are the same component, right? Value brings about contrast. It's placing value next to itself and, and other values that creates contrast. So contrast is always downstream of your understanding of value. And so let's, let's just use this as an instructional point in time. I hope this doesn't, you know, uh, lose anybody, right? But like, let's just grab some colors. Let's grab this one. I'm just going to close my eyes. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to, I kind of know where colors are, but I'm going to grab that, right? So here we have colors, right? Now, who cares what colors they are? I don't care, right? So what order do these go in as far as value, chat? From darkest to brightest. I, I actually didn't know what I was grabbing. I did on the first one, I looked at it, but then I was...
right? Because you got your darkest color is very obvious in this one, right? Dark gray, blue. What's the next one? Oh, you, you had it. Two, four, three, one. Right? Two, two, four, one, three. Yeah, two, four, one, three. Right? Two, four, one, three. That's our value scale right there. Right? Boom. But a lot of people would say because this inherently looks closer to white, they might choose to do this. Right? And so it's that understanding I want people to grasp before almost anything else. Brush control and what we're talking about here are the two most important things, personally. Uh, brush control being able to put the right amount of paint in the right place. Right, we talk about that all the time too. But this is very, very important. So if you just want to go through and, and test yourself, grab, blindly grab a bunch of paints and put them in order brightest to darkest, right? And test yourself and, and ask somebody, is, you know, is this right? I mean, that's a lot of work, but you get my drift, right? Is it just because this color feels more like a white, right, does not mean that your brightest color in any grouping, right? And so you can say, okay, well, great, you know, this would highlight this. It'd be ugly as hell, but, you know, you get the, the, the facts there, right? So as you go through, understanding this will help you immensely in, number one, choosing your paints to develop contrast. Because let's say I want to paint something blue. So I want to paint blue and I use this, and that's my color choice. What am I lacking? Right? I have a dark blue, a mid-tone blue, and a bright blue. What am I not going to have on my model? It's meticulous. It's like, now you're talking my language. But what you're not going to have is good contrast. Okay? You're, you're not going to have good contrast out of this. You're going to get a good blue, but you're going to lack contrast. And so your model is going to look what we call flat, right? Why is it going to look flat? Because you're not going to have enough volume to anything you paint. Because even if you have these two colors sitting next to one another, there's not a big enough value change there to create a real good volume. Now, you can create volumes, but they're going to be dark. So your model is going to need to be a darkish model. So your lighting and your scene and the, the story you're trying to tell is going to need to be filled with more of a moody darkness if you're going to go here, right? And a lot of people would say, well, that's, you know, your 40K uh, grim dark kind of stuff. But what you lose is the ability to pick out a lot of the details on the model are not going to be until you get it up close and can stare at it, you're not going to be able to find the details, right? So what you really need to do is this is great. This is a great blue workup, but what you would really want to do is punch it in with like gray blue at the end. Right? Make a huge jump in brightness to almost you know, a, what we call fake white a lot of times around here. It's like this would act as your white. This would be the brightest co color in the mix. You don't need to have every color in between here. right? I don't have to go to, to sky blue and, and then you know, I don't know what this is, turquoise and, and white mixed together. You don't have to do this. You can. right? This could help you with your blending if you go through more steps of color. right? But in general, you just do this. Right, and then you you do your workup and you find your contrast here, and maybe you mix these two together, right? And then you to determine, like I say all the time, scale what you're trying to paint. Do you want it darker? Then you use less of this. Do you want it brighter? Then you use more of this, right? And you you get that that value built in. This will give you contrast on the model, right? But you can't just do this, right? If you just paint like here and even here and then here, right? You can make it work, but you're going to find yourself mixing these two in order to do it. Because this, these are both so dark. Yes, they're different. This one's darker than this one, right? But this is too bright. So you do need something in between there to make it all work, right? This works great. You want to paint blue? Bam, blue, right? So that's why we focus so much on talking about those types of things, because that will get you really focused on the contrast that you need on a model in order to really get those details to pop. Right. So and, and you see it like as we go through from the beginning stages, we've used some dark and some bright. But you can't really see the details on her. Right? We haven't outlined anything. And if we outlined it all in a, in a dull color, then you wouldn't see it either. You know, then we get contrast when we start adding in all of our brightness. This is the same exact base coat here to here. 
right? But we start doing stuff. And even at the kind of three foot test level that we look at our miniatures on the table, you can see there's some edge highlights going on here. There's some brightness going on on the, on the tops of muscles and stuff. Of course, the non-metallic gold blows the contrast out. That's where most of the contrast on the model is going to be found. But there's contrast everywhere else too. Like on the curve of the thigh here, we get that little bit of spot of highlight and then falls off into darkness. So your brain knows the shape of that thing it's looking at. That's his leg. It's a cylinder. Right over here, same thing, brightness and darkness, that's a cylinder, right? And that's what you're trying to do. We have brightness so we can see the pecs, right? Uh, we can see the, the abs here, right? We can tell the cylinder, the arm, because we have darkness where it's supposed to be, brightness where it's supposed to be, right? So we start playing around with those things, and now the model reads, right, forget the color, who cares? It could be black and white, nobody cares, right? I mean, obviously you care for the end of the model, but it really is irrelevant for a lot of when you're deciding. Right? You just want those shapes to be able to be found. Whereas this one, I can see some of the shapes, right? but not a whole lot, not near as many, because I haven't worked the contrast in yet. I'm still in that kind of mid-dark range here to mid-tone. I don't have highlights. I don't have true darkness on the model yet. So you got to find all that and punch it in. FERC, yeah, and that's the goal, right? We always talk about how we're the, the three-foot test for models is when you make a model and you paint it, does it look good here, right? Can you tell where details are when you set a model down like that, right? So here's one that's, I mean, it's not done, but it's closer to done, right? Versus, uh, again, I don't want to just grab that same model, but I mean, even like something like this, like a troll that has good contrast just from the airbrush, but look at the differences, right? Obviously, this one doesn't have all the color on it because the way I paint doesn't really allow me to have all the color done before we have some contrast, right? But you can see like that there's a cloak here with folds in the cloak, right? You can tell that on the whatever his weapon is that there are various items along the weapon because I've got contrast in all my metallics between gold and silver and the brightness on each and the red even still shows that it's part of a cylinder, right? The highlighting on all the gold, you can see his head. You know, now the one thing here is that his hair color with the orangish yellow, you can't tell. It just looks like a bald guy. So if I were looking at this model and really interested in it, I'd be like, okay, I need to pull some more contrast between his hair and his skin. You know, when we get it up closer, right, you can tell. But so maybe if that was a concern for you, you'd choose a different hair color. Maybe you do black or something like that, right? But you can see that whatever he's got has horns or, you know, there's all these details. You may not know what it is, but you can see detail on it, right? And so that's a good test to see how your painting is going. The other test is that, you know, just take it and, and take a black and white snapshot of a model, right? And by taking a black and white of this guy here, do I have my phone on me? Here, let me go grab my phone because this is the easiest one for you to do. We'll just take a photo, right? Everybody can take a photo. At least I hope everybody can take a photo. Okay. We'll do this. Uh, we'll duplicate this photo. Okay. Take this photo and edit it. And I think I can go here and all the way over here. Not noir. Silver tone. Mono. All right. So on iPhone, it's just called mono. You don't, you don't want to do these crazy ones like silver tone and noir. I mean, they work, but they add in a bunch of false black and contrast. The mono just takes color. Boom, done. Okay. But then let's uh, let's let's crop it so it's easier for us to tell what the hell's going on. Where? Pull it up. Done. Crop this one. Where? Done. Okay. Then, right? It's not gonna matter, right? You made it square. It doesn't matter, Fuse. All right. So then, let's zoom in here. Right. Now we've got, uh, you know, you can say, okay, I, I like where this model's headed. And then you take your black and white of it and you say, can you still find all of your details? Right? So do things like this purple cloth and the blue flesh stand apart and let you know that they're different things when you come over to black and white? Yes. Right? You can see that the cloth, even though over here it doesn't necessarily look like it's a whole lot brighter than the blue. As a matter of fact, here you might say the, bru the blue is brighter than the purple. It's not. Right? The purple is actually brighter than the blue. 
but it lets you know that these are different materials, right? So this is a great way to look at your minis, you know, when you're at that midpoint and say, okay, what do I need to be doing next? And take a photo of it, strip the color out and see what things in black and white look too close to one another, look too similar, right? Does the plume on the end of the tail look like it's just the same color here? Since you can't see color, is it the same gray as the rest of the tail? It's not, right? It's brighter gray than this is. So are all these little pinpricks of, of you know, whatever these are, feathers or whatever. So is the hoof versus the skin. Right? So you look through this sash versus the skin, the bedroll versus the sash versus the skin versus the armor, right? Versus these feathers and these mid-tone feathers and brighter ones and claws. And you just start looking at where are my grays too similar right next to one another when I know they shouldn't be those same colors, right? And then make your determination based on that. Sometimes metallics will blow it out. You know, I don't use a lot of metallics because this, this it doesn't fall apart entirely, but it kind of does. Like here, you can't tell there's different metallics. So metallics kind of take care of themselves, just color-wise. But everything else, you can kind of tell that I think we're headed in the right direction with this model, right? Every part of the model has good shading, right? The skin has good darkness, mid-tone, and brightness on it, but it also stands apart from everything next to it, right? Everything from the little, the little feather bits on the leg and the plume at the tail and the bedroll and saddle and him and blah, blah, blah. And so do that. And it's a fun little thing to do anyway, and it's just something you want to do it long, you know, just take a picture of a, the next handful of models you paint and study it for a minute right let's take a, a picture of another model that has more done to it maybe um like this guy maybe this guy's a good i don't know if this guy's a good example you got to take the picture to know is the problem right i say it's a problem it's only a problem when you're on stream trying to teach Like this guy. Oh. I think you hit like eight buttons. Sir amount of work you had in it okay so this guy we haven't worked into highlights and value yet as a matter of fact we did the green on the skin but we're going to glaze another color over the top so we just kind of stopped on him right he's, he's not anywhere near done okay. so then we go to the black and white and look this guy needs a lot of work right because can you tell that the pants are different than the skin where are the wraps on his arm right, right. you can tell his hair is different but once we get past that we see the difference in the belt but there's not a whole lot of difference in the value, the gray scale on this pouch versus the pants, versus the feet, versus his chest, right? So there's only a few points of contrast on this that start making sense, okay? Color is making it make sense. And so a lot of people just stop there. They're like, okay, I can see the wraps. I can see the skin. It's different colors, right? And so this will cause you to worry more about color than you should, right? When in reality, those colors aren't doing their job. They're not pulling the eye to the right portion of the model like they should, right? Because they're all the same value. Brightness is the same everywhere. That means that the material is going to feel the same to the brain and the eye when they look at it, even though it's like, okay, well, that's not skin, but it's not different enough from skin, you know? So what's really going on here? You, know, and you can put more texture and more, but it's really all about value. It's all about finding the different forms of contrast, then applying the textures with that contrast in various scenarios to really get it all to work. This is a good one. Whereas, you know, again, look at this guy. Look at how the, the grayscale variance is so huge on this guy. There's lots of patches of brightness and darkness uh, next to each other, spread apart, blah, blah, blah. We get all sorts of textures. We can see different materials here. And here, eh, you're asking yourself to know a lot more about the model when you do it like this. Right? Still could be a good model. Still could be great for putting on the table. And you can still be like, yeah, I, my whole army looks like this. You know, it'd be great. But if you pull it up to this level, then all of a sudden it's going to look that much better. Make sense? That's good. Good chat. Glad we had this chat. 